mentioned there are a lot of angels start to get interested in space. And there's quite a community gathering around Harwell, where the company is based. And there's actually a group called Space Tech Angels now in the UK, and some really interesting funds being put, put together in about space. So there, there, are, there will, is a growing group of those investors. But there are also investors really interested in new materials. And I think they need to be thinking also about how they can channel the opportunity around new materials towards investors, because that will certainly broaden up the investment market. So beyond just angels and space funds, you would then actually be able to look for uh, for funds that are really focusing on, on new tech and new tech materials. I don't see any reason why they need investors, actually. Uh, it, 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 they can, you can make small volume clothes uh, without substantial investment. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a capital, it's not a venture capital business. It's not an equity finance business, in my opinion. It's something that uh, you could, you could loan a bit of money if you needed it uh, to produce those garments uh, and manufacture them from sales. This is a type of opportunity that would probably need very long term, very patient investors. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to see spacesuits being sold in, 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 in the hundreds of thousands in the next couple of years. So this would probably not be suitable for institutional investors that have a timeline of seven to 10 years, or maybe 15 years at most. This would probably be something for angel investors, uh, or maybe something that has to be postponed for a couple of years before we get to the point where space tourism is a thing. I think that at this very early stage, they should be looking at angels who are excited by um, both the kind of fashion um, and space tech industries um, with something that's this kind of um, far-fetched and potentially visionary. I think it's really important that um, you have people who care about those industries and have relationships that can help build um, the commercial model of the business. I think given the long-term time horizon of this, for mo for, first and foremost, you need an investor who has the ability to be very patient. This is not going to be a venture capital fund with a five to seven year time horizon. This has to be an investor that can wait 10, 15, 20 years to see a, an, an exit. So it has to be a very patient capital investor, and it has to be one who believes heavily uh, in the future of, space, of commercial space travel. So again, I think I would have to understand really the timeline because that drives a lot of um, a lot of the the capital requirements. So so I would either take a cap capital from a patient capital fund and not take too much, uh, or try and mix non dilutive capital such as grants from the space agency um, to develop the product and then raise a little bit later for the actual kind of commercialization and scale up. I mean, I think it would be very challenging to fund this company, not just because it's in space travel, which is clearly an unproven market with a very small addressable number of potential passengers, even in the next 20 years. Um, so I think you'd basically have to look for investors who are already invested in manned space travel which is a very small pool of investors and it's basically some corporates uh, or some ultra high net worth individuals for me i think um, the naturals would be people who are really comfortable in the garment space because it seems like a big part of what the company's targeting is this idea of um, both functional space gear but also photogenic and attractive um, space gear so I'd be working with folks who do high fashion investing. They should phone Elon, they should phone uh, Jeff Bezos, they should phone all the billionaires that dream of going into space. I'm quite fascinated by space, I think as many of us are, and I am kind of partly involved among space tech angels. So for me, that would be an interesting opportunity I'd want to review. Uh, I definitely wouldn't want to be involved. Uh, it's not. It's not got very much upside potential. Uh, it's. It's totally reliant on the space tourism market. The space tourism market takes an extra ten years to happen. Um, so I don't see any any reason for anybody to get involved. I would love to be involved in, a, in an advice capacity, perhaps. Uh, but in terms of investing capital, it's probably a little bit too early. 
I'd love to learn more about the opportunity. I'd love to meet the founders and understand their vision for the future, but it's, it's not something I would personally invest in yet. I see some interesting facets of it, and I do think um, space tech is a really interesting and evolving area. Um, one thing that I would definitely want to do before knowing whether I would want to be involved is meet the founder and the team and really understand the vision more. Um, I find that that relationship and understanding how they think about um, growth and kind of their long-term vision case is really helpful in knowing whether um, you're aligned and can really build deep conviction in a company. This isn't going to be one for me, I think. Um, uh, the time horizon uh, is an awfully long one. I think there are a lot of other places uh, to devote capital that we can, we can see growth in the very short term, but I would, I would wish them the very best of luck. I think it's an exciting space and um, space travel and actually not just space travel. A lot of, we, we have been looking at space as, a, as, a, as a, an interesting area. Uh, but I do think that is a longer timeline, so I struggle to see how this will become a $1 billion company in a five to seven year horizon, which is what my investment mandate is at Atomico. But it is, you know, ask me in three years and I think this could be, um, or in five years, it could be more relevant. From a venture capital perspective, no, because uh, I don't think it's a business that has venture scale returns. Um, you know, it's not a business that any time in the next two or three decades is likely to have hundreds of millions of customers. No. Um, uh, the kind of ventures that are most attractive to me are ones where I can see an opportunity um, to change the world. Um, and so the bulk of what we're doing at OSI is investing in the future of medicine, the future of energy, the future of materials. Okay, so that would be probably the last venture I'd invest in. Uh, we have a planet that we're actually destroying right now, and all of these billionaires that are dreaming of running away from this place should, in fact, take all of their fortunes, turn around, and actually try to save this place and make it a livable place for the billions of people that are here today. And so for me, I'd prefer to invest in something else, and I encourage them to do so. If you would like to review any of the concepts from this video, please click this button.